Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Amman by Jawad Anani. He was Jordan's Deputy Prime Minister for Economic Affairs. Also with us is Oreb Rantawi. He's the director of the Al Quds Center for Political Studies. And with me here in the studio is Hussam Al Abdallah. He was a senior official within Jordan's government until he quit to become a dissident journalist. After speaking out about corruption, he was arrested, charged with defamation on social media, and jailed. But I'm glad that you're. Here safely in studio with me, uh, Hussam. Uh, let me start with you, Jawad Annani. So, the Jordanian government getting an injection from the Germans, uh, $100 million, uh, $334 million injection from Riyadh, other nations committing. It sounds as if this government and this economy is being propped up by foreign governments. Is that where we are at? Well, the most important event that came to the support of Jordan recently was the London conference, as you know which was held at the end of February, and it donated uh, or pledged $2,500 million for Jordan from four different governments, uh, basically uh, uh, United, uh, France, uh, United Kingdom, and Japan, and uh, from the European uh, Reconstruction Bank and Development Bank. Uh, now we hear that uh, other governments like G Germany is chipping in. Mm -hmm. So in a way that helps uh, meet the pressing circumstances that Jordan is passing through right now. But it does not resolve the problem, of course. Okay, so Hussam, there are those who would say, if you look at Jordan's geography, unfortunately for Jordan, it neighbors Iraq, it neighbors Syria, a million Syrian refugees came in. The country just couldn't cope. And therefore, it's a victim of geopolitics. That's why there was the London Investment Conference. That's why these countries are helping. It's not because of anything that was rotten internally. It's just a victim of circumstance. Your response to that? Thank you, Mr. Imran, and uh, thank you for the RT Award. And uh, welcome to Dr. Anani and Dr. Oray Berantawi. Uh, thank really, you. I, wa I want to speak about uh, the problem in Jordan, the real problem in Jordan. Always our government and our regime say there our problem in Jordan because we have a war in Syria, we have problem with Iraq, we have problem in areas in Jordan, both Jordanian. But really the, the problem in Jordan, we don't have freedom, we don't have jobs for people, we don't have a real democracy. The Jordanian people need a healthy political democracy, not democracy for decoration. Everything in Jordan is decoration, parliament decoration. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Dr. Anani, he uh, work in government. I work with him. He's my teacher, really. He know in Jordan we have three government, not one government. Well, this is the point. This is the problem in Jordan. The problem in Jordan, that's from outside. Okay. The problem's in, in, inside of Jordan. Okay, so we'll expand on it in a moment. Oray Brantawi, do you agree with that? The problem doesn't come from outside. It comes from a lack of freedom and opportunity and growth on the inside. I think the problem resulted from both dimensions, not only from uh, outside. Yes, we faced uh, serious challenges because of this regional turmoil that Jordan also affected, impacted during the last decade almost. But also we have a serious problems when it, when it comes to the public policies adopted by the successive governments in the last 10 or maybe 20 years. Governments used to put unemployment poverty on the top of the Jordanian agenda, national agenda, but without any serious success to deal with this, with these major two heavy files on our agenda. There is a problem, yes. I can agree that we are not a full-fledged democracy in Jordan. We have a serious problems. There is no serious breakthrough in the political reform track. But I never agree with the assumption that Jordan is not affected by the, its okay. geopolitics and by the regional conflicts at all. Right. Only take one figure that we have one million Syrian refugees or, or more Right. This is a heavy burden on our shoulder. Oh, yeah, it's actually more than 1.3 million Syrian refugees. It's a massive number. Hossam, is your problem with the king, Abdullah, or with the government of Omar Razazan and the prime minister, with the government that he appointed to sort things out? 
Where's your, where's your problem? Yeah, I, yeah, I tell you before, we have not uh, one government in Jordan. We have the government. Right. The government of uh, real court, the government with uh, uh, four circle, Dr. Omar Razaz, and we have government uh, from uh, Jordanian intelligence. Not the government, only government in uh, Dr. Omar Razaz is not the uh, owner, he's not uh, make the decision in uh, Jordan. If the king, if King Abdullah says, Omar Razaz, thank you very much, but please leave, we've got a new government. Would you be encouraged by that? Uh, the problem will be stay. Why? Because the people must choose, choose the, the prime mm -hmm. ministry. The prime ministry, the king, uh, he chose the prime ministry. The prime ministry, like Omar Razaz, he don't uh, choose all the team. Right. Uh, our friend, they know that. Uh, the uh, Dr. Omar Razaz maybe shows four or five uh, uh, ministers. He not shows all the team. Right. The king uh, shows okay. the, and the wife of the king shows and uh, the Jordanian intelligence shows the team with the, uh, to any government in Jordan. Right. Well, this is, a br this right. is really a problem uh, for us. Jawad Annani, is it a lack of political skill and a lack of democracy that's at the root of the problem or is it just basically a lack of sound economic fiscal policy? Well, first of all, let me comment on uh, what Mr. Arabiat has said. I think that, you know, what, what he's saying is, is, is just, uh, you know, not uh, non-scientific uh, words that he's saying. And I, I really hate to describe the situation as he did. Of course, naturally, the intelligence in Jordan has acquired greater power mm -hmm. as a result of the security issues which have been dominating in the region. The second one is that His Majesty always, you know, he's, he acts like the president of a country. So he has lots of executive power. Uh, nobody can deny that. So in a way, this has been the case in Jordan for a long time, since 1921. Now, the question that uh, uh, about democracy and uh, reform, I agree that we need a democratic uh, transition in Jordan simply because the issues now require that people understand and interact with government policies. Without the, uh, an interactive approach between both governments and the people, it is very difficult for right. people to be convinced that they should make sacrifices. So in a way, we need uh, two party or at least three party systems that a, a, the party that wins the elections will have a program that it will throw at the people and the majority of the, once it wins the majority, then everybody else will be content with that. Uh, I mean, we cannot uh, continue to listen only to the people who, co who complain because they have not been winning as a result of the, uh, of the economic policy that any government is applying. So in a way, the people who are happy keep mum and they do not mention it, mm -hmm. they do not pronounce it. But the people who are suffering are complaining all the time. So in a way, you only hear complaints, but you don't hear appreciation. In a party system, I think we have matured enough to move into the transition where people make decisions and people are the source of authority and that is why when people make a choice, mm -hmm. then that is the choice that should be applied and implemented. Okay, so, so in a way so that will give more, more acceptance. Right. That will give more acceptance. Right. Yes. So let me ask you, Hussam, because when we look at the people who have been protesting and the people who have been complaining, to use Jawad Anani's words, there's a mix of, of people. So you have those who purely have political slogans. Uh, those who have purely have economic slogans. And then you have, for example, the Ikhwan, the Muslim Brotherhood. They have their own thing, their own mm. agenda. There are others who talk about normalization with Israel and so forth, which, from an outsider's perspective looking at it, it looks as if there's no sort of general theme. Yes, it starts with economics and maybe IMF um, requirements and too many sacrifices that people are making, but it looks like a mixed bag of things among the protesters. Is that a problem, that there's no unified theme amongst those people in the tents, those people on the streets? I want to do something, just some word. The, the old of our state, 100 old, 100 years now, still we ask uh, another country to help us. If you have children, 
20 years, 30 years, he, he will depend for himself, okay? 100 years, still ask another country to help us. This is our problem. There are, there are problems, you know, we don't have a, a really solution for problems. Now, Jordanian before, and Dr. Anani, uh, uh, he worked in government, and he know everything. And maybe he speak now uh, something uh, not uh, till another, another one, uh, uh, and Jordan speak uh, different but if, uh, here. But if, if you don't ask other people for help right now, what do you want? Do you want people starving on the streets? you want poverty? No, no, no. Right. we have, we have uh, assets. We have assets in Jordan. We have assets in Jordan. We sold all our assets in Jordan. Still, the debit uh, for our country, uh, 40 million, uh, billion dollars. 40 billion dollars, 40 billion dollars. Yes. Uh, We have uh, 9 billion people in Jordan, and we have everything. It's not a poor country as uh, the government says. But there aren't says. really any natural resources. Uh, we, ha we, ha we have. Yes, we have. Like what? We have uh, uh, butas, we have uh, uh, patra, we have, uh, we have uh, 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 clever people, we have sure. uh, education, mm -hmm. we, have, we have everything in Jordan. Uh, our country is rich, it's not poor as the government says. Okay. Okay. Always, always, okay, so, always, yeah, okay, yeah. so let's ask Uraib. Uraib, Hossam saying yes. this is a country with a lot of human capital, a young population, very educated population. I spent six weeks in Jordan a decade ago. I can attest to that. Educated, smart, young people, right? He's saying the country's too reliant on foreigners. It should be able to stand on its own two feet, All right? This is now a deep understanding among the Jordanians, all the Jordanians, whether in the streets, the, uh, those who demonstrate against the government, or even within the decision-making circles yani, in Jordan. There is a, a, a belief now that Jordan should move from total dependency to independent country, a, a self-reliance country. This is really one of the issues yani, uh, where there is a common maybe consensus around it. But yet it needs really, yani, it's not uh, a decision that you can take over one night and being shifted from total dependence to a self-reliant country. I think it's a process, and it may take years and decades to achieve such a, a, a big goal for this country. But I do agree, Yanni, with what you said, that we have a fragmented protest in the streets. We have different demands for different group peoples. It's by all means shrinking those days, but that, mm -hmm. that doesn't reflect the public anger about the economic and financial and taxation policies of this uh, government and the previous ones as well. Uh, as well. Uh, also, I want to comment on this d dilemma about political reform and economic reform. We can go parallel in both the tracks, and the, ma the major lesson learned from our 20, 30 years experience that without a serious economic reform, without a breakthrough in the democratization process, economic reform will be lack of social sensitivity economic reform will be uh, enclaved with a lot of rumors mm -hmm. and realities about uh, corruption. The cost of corruption, corruption is high. Right. And I think the only way yani, to minimize the bill of corruption is to go far in the political reform and the democratization process. Right. Jawad Anani, what should King Abdullah do now? I think that uh, His Majesty King Abdullah should really address the issue uh, right smack as he did face the political dilemmas. Uh, what uh, both gentlemen, I agree with both gentlemen, Mr. Rantawi uh, 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 has pointed out that it is a dilemma. I don't think it's a dilemma. I think it is too a pronged process that must be completed, that must be implemented in complementarity with each other. Uh, you cannot uh, do one without the other. Uh, why? Because the transmission, the transition process that will require at least five or six years. Uh, and that means we have to convince people that they should really be patient. Mm -hmm. I remember that Turkey in the early 1980s, you know, had came up with Mr. Uh, uh, Turgut Özel, who promised that he will transform Turkey 
at that time, but he asked people to uh, wait with him, to be patient, to uh, accept sacrifices. Now, the Jordanian people would accept sacrifices if they, if they see a light at the end of the tunnel, if they believe that their best men are really in control, if they believe that there is a very constructive and obvious plan mm -hmm. that is being put to lay and it is being implemented with seriousness. People need to gain confidence that the government and the king are really uh, taking a very uh, a serious and very uh, de determined and, uh, uh, process towards uh, uh, imp uh, bringing Jordan out of its economic uh, wars right now. And poverty and unemployment are the two basic, basic right. challenges which Jordan must address. The only way to do that is to go for serious investment processes and uh, to get, get out of this rentier society approach where the government hires 42% 40, of the labor force in Jordan. Okay. This okay. is too much of a burden right. on government, which is allowing very little money for the private sector to move. Okay, I've got to wrap. So, Hussam, I'm going to give you the final word here, but I just want to know, you, you'll go back, right? Are you okay with going back and... Uh, go back to Jordan? To Jordan. I can't. You can't? I can't go back to Jordan. Because, because uh, of what you said? Uh, uh, if I go to back, it will uh, catch me. Because uh, we don't have democracy in Jordan. We have, uh, Gamar, the, our government is, uh, is not, uh, uh, she's not uh, respect uh, uh, another uh, opinion. Uh, let me, let me know, ask it to you the other way around then. Uh, what will it take for you to go back? What would give you the confidence to trust them to go back? Uh, we have a uh, uh, gap with our uh, king. Mm -hmm. We have gap between people and government. When our king be close to us and we will be close to, with him, okay. I think, uh, and uh, uh, we love the people, so, uh, some people in Jordan love the king. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the, uh, because uh, because the, for that uh, we go to Jordanian uh, to the, the royal palace. Right. Uh, because we know the problem for, from the royal, royal palace and the solution there. Okay. If our king uh, help us, live uh, like us, live us like uh, we love him. Yes. I will come uh, come okay. back to Jordan. Okay. Hossam, I've got to wrap. But gentlemen, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you. Hossam Al-Abdallah, Urayb Rantawi and Jawad Anani. Thanks again.